Hi folks, welcome back to my channel. Um, when I first started my channel last year, one of the early videos I did in the autumn showed how it was possible to do astrophotography using an Altaz mount. And in that video I showed maybe six, seven or so images that I'd done with my Altaz mount. Um, but I thought that it was time that I showed many more images to give you an idea of what you can expect if you're using an Altaz mount. So in this video here I'm going to show you around 30 images that I did over a couple of years period using my uh, Altaz equipment. My name is John and I make videos on camping, astronomy and walking. If you like what you see in this video then please check my channel out as there may be others that interest you there. But in the meantime, let's crack on with today's video. So this is my typical setup. It's a Celestron Nexstar um, SLT Altaz mount, and that's the lightweight version of their Altaz mount, onto which I put a small refractor, uh, typically an Altair Astro 70 millimeter refractor. But I started off with a um, Orion short tube 80 millimeter refractor and I take my images using a, a Canon DSLR camera. The main issue with using an Altaz mount for astrophotography is you're limited to quite short exposures and the reason for this is the way the Altaz mount tracks the sky. Basically an Altaz mount follows the stars in the sky using a series of steps or a stepped motion so it's kind of a long and up and a long and up and a long and up like that whereas an equatorial mount like this follows more of a of a smooth curve and the net result of this is that the Altaz mount has exposure times limited to between 10 and about 30 seconds before you get star trailing depending on what part of the sky you happen to be looking at. Now um, in my case the images shown in this video were all taken between 13 and 15 seconds or so and the total integration time once I'd stacked multiple images up was typically between 10 and minutes and 30 minutes, half an hour. They were nearly all taken at an ISO of 1600 with some of the fainter objects being taken at 3200. The advantage of an Altaz mount is it's really fast to set up and not particularly complicated. So it lends itself uh, to people starting out doing astrophotography through a telescope if they've kind of moved on from uh, taking wide field images with just a DSLR and often people have an Altaz mount anyway because that's what they bought when they got into astrophotography. Um, so yeah I, I use mine where you want to get set up quickly, get your imaging done and get back inside before it clouds over and it lends itself very well to small pockets of clear sky um, and it often would make the difference between getting out and um, doing some astrophotography and not doing it at all and um, you know it takes a little bit of time to get this sort of rig set up and if you've only got a very short window of clear and you're not sure whether it's going to be clear at all you often can't be bothered to drag a, a heavy equatorial mount out. So yeah, for those of you that are contemplating using your Altaz mount for astrophotography, um, I hope that the images that I show here will give you some encouragement that you can get reasonable results out of it. You're certainly not going to win astrophotography photograph of the day or anything like that, but the images are certainly good enough to um, amaze your friends and, and keep you happy. So yeah, I hope you enjoy these and I'll see you again next time. Cheerio.
So many years, too many tears on your pillow, on your pillow.